Have you ever been in the position where you worked for too long on your design and left no time for any kind of presentation sketch? No matter how good your design ideas were, the client just couldn't get by the rendering. That's why I created these hybrid iPad rendering techniques so you could create quick sketches, charming and loose, or even almost photorealistic, that sell your ideas effectively and can be made in a fraction of the time it would take to do the same in a computer rendering or in a more careful hand sketch on paper. So let's dive in and see how I use these techniques to create an interior and an exterior rendering in less than one hour each to help my clients sell their ideas at an important meeting. The first project was for a ski lodge and sledding hill lodge designed for a, a, a ski resort in Switzerland. And you can see all of the layers involved. And here we're starting with a basic, this was a Shaper 3D image. So we started with that and I'm gonna go ahead with a video playback and I'll talk along with it and tell you what I was up to. And here we go. And remember, you can stop these video playbacks, start and stop them with your finger. So here is our beginning sketch, and I started by simply grabbing all of the background uh, black area and turning it into sky. And that got rid of that so that um, the forward part of the building could be used as a mask. And then I brought in this image of the mountains in Switzerland so that that could be positioned in such a way as to give the design maximum drama. So I use the selection tool in automatic mode quite a bit during this process. So I've selected and lightened all of this area of the snow so that it reads a little better than the Shaper 3D sketch. Now I'm selecting this area of the shadow and I am beginning by pulling it out and putting it on its own layer. And the same thing with this window. You pull them out and you put them on their own layer. Same thing with the shadow to make this simple sort of silk screen like composition. And then the kids are going to go in here at some point. And then I'm looking at some texture in the snow and then choosing colors. Now I'm copying areas of this building and then adding new layers for these colors so I can adjust them completely. And you'll see I'm dabbling with the idea of a wood layer, not knowing quite how to light or dark to make it. But all of Procreate's color adjustment features really work beautifully with this. You can see down here, I'm covering the kids and the sled so that they don't look quite so pasted in and then reducing the opacity of that covering. And that covering is selected just by selecting that shape and then adding a new layer and then filling it with a color. So one of the other more powerful techniques, now I'm combining all the layers, grouping them all and enlarging it so I can begin to work on it at a scale that will be more like when we present it. And I'm selecting some of these people here on the balcony and giving them some color so they don't look quite so droll as shape 3D, enlarging the whole thing again, playing with the idea of having a reflection from the sun off of some sort of metal roof because that sun can be so bright in the Alps. And again, back to that, but I'm not sure that's working out. And then the rest of it is just sort of extending the snow. The main parts are done now. Fine tuning, extending the snow using the smudge tool, smudging out these boulders, giving them some texture, adding some lines. And this was the study for adding an indoor outdoor fireplace so the parents can work themselves and just a few more details design development you might say on the fly and then giving that a bold color and then enlarging the mountains in the back to give this more presence still and of course that color is chosen to, to bounce off the blue gray of the mountains and now adding some shadows that would be cast by these trellis members and you can see lightening things little strategic choices like that should be lighter like this area here so I lighten that and then I lighten this thing over here, the same thing, the uprights, and adding more detail. It's pretty much done, but there are always things you can do. I'm cleaning up the chimney a little bit, adding new sledders, and here they go. And I'll give them the same treatment where I select them as a layer, and then select the entire layer, and then add a fill layer above it to kind of tone them down make them look a little more consistent with the rest of the project. You can see up here, we're getting close to the end of this 35 minute drawing to do all of this. And there's more snow going off to the side. And a lot of times I like to leave the margins loose to, for extra emphasis and give them some more depth. But here I'm cleaning it up. I'm just gonna let the texture read 
And then just adding some more entourage over here, so a quick import of these entourage figures, and then shrinking them down, putting them over there. Again, going back to compare, this is a constant thing. And this is setting up the final uh, uh, view so we can show this to the clients and start with the original and then end up here. Now, the interiors project was for a food court in Las Vegas, and the client wanted to spice all of this up, uh, make it a little less old. It's about 30 years old. So I'll go again to the video replay, and um, here we go. We're just some very basic uh, cutting out of things. First, we sort of applied a background color to parts, the leading edge of the canopy. We bring in the tile, and notice that we change the colors of the tile, again, using, using automatic selection, and then provided that kind of a, duplicating that and moving them over. So this is just the simplest thing and happens all the time, then conforming it to the shape of the bar itself. This is uh, starting to study the lighting of it and turning down the transparency, uh, making sure it feels more at home inside the render and then we darken the bottom of it a little bit. And then you can see we've thought about, should we make it, uh, first we laid out the sketch as a pencil uh, for the client. We did several options, and there's a, those are those design options I was talking about, where uh, because this is so quick, you get to still test a few things just before the end. And so all kinds of ideas there. But then we decided on the, the simplest version, which is planting and having overhanging plants on a balcony. So so again, we kind of laid that out with a client. That's actually their handwriting, got some notes from them. And then we knew that we had to strike out some of these things, or we asked the clients which ones they would like to get rid of, and we did so. And then we began to um, alter the photo, almost like art restoration, where you uh, retouch over the photo itself using smudge tools, uh, new layers. It's just the easiest thing in the world. And again, try to bring in these um, other objects, the final objects we're going to use, bringing that. We know we're going to use plants. This was a low resolution plant. We probably should have made it a little better. And we're going to place them up there now, playing around with all the different things in the background, trying to tone down the right areas. And here come the plants, just duplicating them, making sure that they're in the right layer order so that the closer plants to us are above in the layer order so they overlap things. And adding a few more details, adding some monitors, just quick and simple to put them in on their own layer. And then we can adjust the colors of them and the intensity later. Here comes the same kind of, or a different tile for the back bar, but that has to be toned down. So it comes in light and then gets toned down and finally we found just the right spot for it and we begin reviewing everything making sure the colors are adjusted to work with each other simplifying things now here comes the twilight exercise of what i call the interior lighting study and the first step is to create an entire layer of gray violet in multiply blend mode then you put that over and then simply erase away from it to get the effect you're looking so you can see i'm just using a soft airbrush brush in eraser mode to get rid of that light or that darkness, that twilight, over the plants. Same thing back here. There is that layer itself isolated, and you can see that it's been scrubbed out where I want the maximum lighting to occur in the background. Now, same thing, lightening some of these sides, lightening the twilight layer over certain key spots in the rendering. Uh, lightening up the uh, windows and then it's always fun to put a, a pool of light right below or right at the at the key place you want the eyes to focus on so that literally is just me again erasing away that layer but it looks there there's that layer isolated it's hard to get to i'll see if i can get to that again there you see how much i erased from that layer and that's the effect it produced so now i'm adding some reflections to bring that slick sort of street surface a little bit more alive and uh, look at look at how the depth that that created and that's what i mean by an almost photorealistic sketch in all of this and this one's a little longer this is taking me an hour and 20 minutes so far so uh, forgive me and then adding some more entourage uh, putting people in from the entourage set that um, I sell on my website. Again, checking everything. This is just going back to the original photo to see how that worked out. And that is more or less the other rendering. There's the interior rendering. Don't forget in the description, you'll find three ways to become a better designer with iPad drawing. You'll also see an invitation to leave one of your renderings for our one minute masterclass critique that we like to do on this channel and on Instagram sometimes. Also, we've got online courses. So 
What can I say? I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to check out either this video or this video.